Now, wouldn't it be great to be able to talk to the animals? Unfortunately, the only person likely to be able to do that is Dr. Doolittle. But that's not putting off one scientist, as Vince Rogers finds out. Their hands are almost human. Their eyes are almost human. So what's going on inside their heads? And do they talk to each other, just like humans? Well, one woman who's trying to find out is Dr Gillian Sebastian Forrester. This is Port Lim Animal Park near Hythe in Kent. And Gillian from Sussex University has been coming here for three years to study their gorillas. Just like you and I are using our speech here to communicate with one another, gorillas also use vocal um, signals, but that's not all they use. Just like us, they also use their facial expressions and their manual gestures, they use their body postures and their eye gaze to give off information to one another. And I'm trying to capture that on video so that I can look for patterns in their behavior and see if they're unique or if maybe they're similar to us or um, can give us clues about the evolution of how our own spoken language came to be. Of course, gorillas don't speak English. They don't understand phrases like multimodal communication. Mind you, neither do I. Oh! This is uh, Mumba. Yeah and her son, Jaja. What's nice about this clip is there's a real exchange going on. Yeah. Oh no, what was that? That was a little kind of gesture. Yes, a clear gesture, and he's responding. He's gone to the end of the branch, and turn around, and come back. So she's done something like this, doesn't she? It does look like a circular motion, and her son has actually gotten up and turned around. Just like with humans, there's an exchange of information going on. What you mean, something's like going backwards and forwards? Exactly, they're turn-taking. Gillian's work is of international importance in the field of animal communication. And what she discovers about gorillas could apply to human beings. Absolutely, they're our closest living relatives, so getting an understanding of how they communicate with one another might give us some clues about the evolution of human language. Come on, then. The head keeper of the gorillas is Phil Ridges. He's been looking after them for 18 years. Gorillas are quite subtle in their communications. And a lot of it is actually sort of body posture and eye contact with each other. Do you think they've actually got stuff to say to each other? Yeah, yeah. Whether it be, oh, I'm happy, you know, gorillas you know, tell each other they're, they're, they're content quite often, actually. It's a, a, gr a grumbling sound. Like, <clears throat> The thing is, a lot of people come down to the animal park for fun. They bring the cameras and they film the animals. You're doing it for a living. Yeah, I yeah. mean, how good is that? It's fantastic. It's the best job I could have ever hoped for. Look at him. He's huge and he sort of looks grey. Yes, this is, this, this is Jallo. He's, the, he's the, um, the dominant male in the group here, known as a silverback. Is there like a hierarchy? Is there kind of, you know, has everyone got their place? That's right, the yeah. The, the, the dominant male's at the top. And then the, within, the, within the group, the females are, have got their own hierarchy as well. So there's a dominant female, and then there's a pecking order after that. They're supposed to be about eight to ten times stronger than an average man. Do yeah. you some serious damage? Oh, yeah, it could, yeah, it could kill you. Yeah, yeah, easily. Oh, is he the alpha male? He is. He is. And he um, might not like oh. you very much. <laughs> oh. That was scary. I just saw a fist coming at me. Uh, I've been with these guys for about yeah, 18 years now. Oh, that's a, that's a long time. You don't speak gorilla yet, then? Uh, kind of, yes. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> of course, it would be nice to think that Gillian is trying to speak gorilla. However, like all things scientific, it's not that simple. But she is taking the first steps in that direction by studying how they talk. That's quite a shame, because we'd love you to be like a Dr. Doolittle or something, <laughs> you know, learning how to talk to the animals. I feel a musical coming on, it'd be great, <laughs> wouldn't it? I don't think it's a very fruitful proposition to try to understand what they're saying before we understand how they're saying it. The reason Gillian's so interested in these particular gorillas is that they're a very special bunch. They're not just any old gorillas. They're a family group, so just like a human family, they all have relationships with each other. 
This is basically how they live in the wild. Um, you know, they live in family social groups in the wild, and it's basically you know, replicated here, here in uh, captivity. The gorillas have got used to having Gillian around, like this one called Emmy. Is she right up against the glass? Does she recognise you? She does recognise me. We're here quite often, so she, you do build rapport, uh, just like you would with people. Um, some of them like you, some of them don't. <laughs> Emmy seems to like us quite a lot. Though Emmy did fall out with Gillian when Gillian became pregnant. And as my bump grew, uh, so did her aggression towards me. And this turned into throwing things at me. Wow. That was a good throw. What was all that about? Was she jealous or something? We're not really sure what it was about. We used to joke that she thought I cut the queue for breeding rights with the silverback, but... Um... Not um, planning any more, are you? <laughs> no. You don't want to cause any trouble. <laughs> Things are quite peaceful at the exactly. moment, so... Uh... We don't want to rock the boat here, no. But there's no need to worry now anyway, because one of the other gorillas has produced an addition to the family. What do you think of the baby? Oh, she's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And the mum, too. <laughs> when did she arrive? Uh, she's, what, three, four weeks old now? So it's made a difference. They're all behaving differently now the new baby's here. They are. I don't know um, if you've noticed, but they're giving her a lot of space. The other mums, um, the, other, the other females are giving her a lot of space. And the silverback is very protective of her right now. Although you, you think of the silverback as the big bully, um, he's actually the protector and the peacemaker of the family. And so Gillian's work on guerrilla communication goes on. Do you think we'll ever talk to gorillas? I don't think so, no, not entirely. It's hard, hard enough with people sometimes. If, you know, <laughs> if people can't communicate with you, it, you know, if people get it wrong, you know, even with humans. But Gillian thinks that one day we may understand what's going through their heads. I do, and I think these are the first steps to that, which might eventually reveal some information about what they're saying.